The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials down uh, 40. You get the Nasdaq off 7. S&P's uh, off 4.5. We have the gold contract taking up a buck 10 at 1274 an ounce. Silver, $14.83. Light sweet crude, uh, $66.36. We've had quite a run on light sweet crude. You missed some action, baby. I, You're back. I, I'm back, man. <laughs> higher I'm, oil prices, higher gas prices right? for sure. No doubt. Notes and bonds, you got the 10 year note up 13 ticks, 123.17. 30 year up 24 at 147.08. And King Dollar, King Dollar uh, 150 up 97.470. The euro's at 111 to 1 US dollar. The yen is out there trading at uh, 111 and a half. And we get the pound at 129 to 1 US dollar. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TG Meritrade, Think a Swim. And don't forget, folks, every trading day right here, you want to understand option, option strategies. Futures, great program, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. Welcome back, Tom. How's everything? Everything is great, and uh, great to be back, folks. I was uh, at the Canton Fair over in China. It China. Was, I, I can tell you. We'll tell you stories about it. You know why I'm telling you why everything's made in China, man. I, I saw things that you just are just so cool. It's insane. I bet. That's what totally we hear, insane. right? And so I heard you've been taking care of the market, too, Kevin. You get the dollar at a high. You get the market at highs. What are we doing here? I think we have just a market that is, remember, going into this earnings season, the bar was set so low for a lot of these companies, and a lot of the expectations were so, I think, way overdone on the, down, on the downside that things are just coming in, you know, not gangbusters, but much better than everyone expected, and stocks are showing that, right? Look at, perfect case in point, look at Boeing, right? Yeah. On their news and what they came out with and the charges that, that they're taking, the stock is off yeah. based on that. I think you're showing a very re resilient market here that, like I said, Firms are, you know, making er softer earnings but beating expectations across the board. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty remarkable in that Boeing. They basically came out and said, listen, things are so crazy, we're not going to give you any guidance for this year. Right. We don't know what's going on. Right. The market's like, we like that, we're trading higher. Right. <laughs> yeah. So it shows you what people think about the overall you know, makeup of Boeing's company and what a quality company that yeah. is. I mean, you know, what, here's what traders want, guys. Traders want, give me a number. Give me a number and give me a date in Boeing. Right. And so the fact that they can, if they can give good, solid guidance on when they think they have a handle on this or the fact that they do it all, stock investors will like that. Yeah, no, I can see that for sure. And, you know, I mean, if we, you know, if we take a look at, uh, uh, just switch gears on you for a second and go over yeah. to Apple. You know, if I, I learned anything, you know, we, we know that everyone's on their phones. Um, but I'll tell you, when you see a billion people on their phones, it's, yeah. Like, yeah. it's like, wow. I mean, and they're not going to be on the new Samsung $2,000 phone. I don't know if you saw that, but it seems like it was put we, together by small children in China, not to joke, but I mean, oh, quite a fiasco, man, yeah, that they're the, dealing the with. Yeah, the foldable deal. Yes. Yeah, the seems it's amazing, Tommy, that they didn't have the quality of that phone more reeled in before I, I, they put it out there to the general public to look and know. inspect. I mean, there are analysts pretty, that's that a grabbed pretty big it. miss on their part. Yeah, and it's not like, oh, we didn't test it out for 10,000 folds, you know? It's yeah. like analysts got it and broke instantly. Wow. <laughs> right. To many of them. Right. Um, so that they really... A, that, that, that is a PR nightmare. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, and they're still dealing with it. I saw articles coming out today. You know, it's just not going to stop. So, hey, Apple, man. I'm an Apple fan. We'll see. I, you know, and, and it, just, just watching the stores over there, <sighs> yeah. what happens is that even I was in the middle of just industrial China in a huge way, right? So it wasn't the tourist place at all. But city after city after city still had Apple stores, Apple stores, Apple stores. You'd see factories 
And Apple stores. <laughs> it was they have quite like, a brand. I mean, oh, so, big time. Yeah, and then right. the, the, the Hawar is there, and huge. Yeah, there. Huawei, and, Sam, yeah. And, and Samsung is there. They, they're yeah. all there. Yeah. But I'll tell you, um, the, the world is the same. Yes. Except and remember, see, well, what, the way all your viewers and all the TD Ameritrade clients, the way they should think of China, China supplies the demand for right. the world, basically. And that's all-encompassing. That's goods and services, that's crude oil, that's grains, that's every single market. The variable out there is China and their demand. So any firming of their economy, any strength coming out of their consumer is good for all those things that I just mentioned. Yeah. Oh, there's no doubt. And you can see it. I mean, it doesn't, you can just, you see like from the beginning of when something is there, meaning steel's coming in, iron ore's coming in, turning into steel, turning into things. I bet. And it's just, it's just a turn 24 hours a day. Yeah. 24 hours a day. Um, pretty amazing. And, you know. And, and, and I'll bet you, Tom, that you saw and the reason why the United States has to be so diligent in our trade practices. Because if you, if, you, if you mess up something with trade with China, it's a big number. Oh, right? it is. Things can get away from you quickly there. And, and picture, where I was, so I was at the Canton Fair. So the Canton Fair is the largest fair in the world. It's been on 125 times, uh, not years, in 1957. But everything and anything, there's 200,000 people there from all over the world. Okay. And I'm talking about every continent, I bet. every buyer for every Home Depot, for every Lowe's, for anything and everything. Uh, but you, what you actually see, which is amazing, is that that's for the world, too, not just the United States. Yeah. I mean, it's the world. It's, there's associations that go together, so when they go to these factory cities, because that's where we were, that they can also bring down the price. And yet this the deflation thing, Kevin, is yeah. not going to go away. This is what, if I learned anything over there, everything is going to keep getting made smarter and smaller. The only thing that is going to keep going up, I think, is, is hard assets. And right. Be, because the affordability, they can keep squeezing and squeezing and squeezing, and that's what the Walmarts are about, and that's what everything else is about. And, yeah. and, and, and think yeah. about it, guys. Think the most simple example that you can make about that is the television that you watch every night. Right. And look at how much you used to spend for a projection TV, not even a tube, back in the 80s and 90s, and look what you're spending today. Yeah. It's, I mean, that is the perfect definition for the consumers that of as technology gets better, things don't get more expensive, they get cheaper. Yes. Right, because the, the, the technology and everything catches up and it just becomes more efficient, not less. Yeah, there's no doubt, man, no doubt. And... Um, so we got Tesla earnings today. Oh, after the bell. Oh, what are we talking Tesla, about, Kevin? Oh. Facebook. Here's what we're covering today. Obviously, we're going to talk about crude oil because it's Wednesday and it's inventories. Yep. We're going to talk about Boeing and Caterpillar's earnings that just came out. We're going to talk about Facebook. We're going to talk about Tesla. I mean, really, we could go further. We could go Visa. I mean, we're going to talk until the bell rings on our show. We're going to keep day. cranking Slow out names. As many minutes as they give us to work on. <laughs> you got to love it. Well, listen, man, we look forward to show 45 minutes. Great to be back with you, Kevin. Great talking to you guys. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, Kevin. Absolutely. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow down 26. You get the NASDAQ off one. S&Ps are off three. Come right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrials right now are down 14. We get the NASDAQ up one. S&Ps are uh, down one and a half. And uh, so we're right in the middle of earnings, aren't we? Oh, yeah. man. It's rocking and rolling. It's been a big uh, week. So this week, 140, I believe, S&P okay. stocks out of 500. Wow. So one of yeah. the biggest so weeks, if not the peak. biggest. Right. We almost got one out of three stocks coming this week. Right. And um, like Kevin was saying, man, we got some big ones today alone. Uh, so oil. Oil, right? right? Jumping over, let's see where we are. Um, so I was looking for, I was trying to look for the median analyst estimate, what we're looking for. This will pop up. Let's see if the top live is up. I believe the top live starts 10 minutes ahead of time. Yeah, so it's going to pop up there at 1020. Um, we'll get those. And then we get Occidental getting in the middle of uh, Chevron and Anadarko, huh? Yeah. So um, you had Chevron, I believe it was $33 billion. That's okay. just going off memory, but I believe it was $33 billion. And um, you have a $38 billion counter offer for Anadarko to disrupt the agreed Chevron deal. Now, I, I, I believe this was like 75% stock, 25% cash. Um, and I remember when you reported that before because there's a huge uh, breakup fee of the okay. first one. Okay, okay. You know, if they, if they, if there's a breakup fee in this, I forget what the number was, but it was a big number, man. Okay. And yeah, so this is, so there was, and I'm not sure, so Hullab, who is Hullab here? Let's see, a CFO maybe in one of them. Um, they pushed the offer from 25% cash. We'll, we'll dig into this, but they, it seems like this might not be the end of that story, as in I imagine that Chevron's going to have a response. We'll see what it yeah. is. Uh, let's see. So a reminder that a bid valued at $76 a share would exceed Anadarko's 52-week high of 70, um, but the company was trading above 110 in 2014. But, yeah. man, that's 2014, when, That's yeah. when oil prices were through the moon. Yeah, 2014 is a long way from where we're But We're almost at $67 oil, which is pretty remarkable. Um, okay, so let's jump over. We'll take a look. Um, all right, so crude oil, there we are this morning. We're looking at the June contract, trading at $66.19. So, man, quite a day yesterday, too. I mean, I think we had oil at six-month highs. 
S&P record close. Yep. I believe NASDAQ record close as well. And the X100, big time. Oh, yeah. for sure. Um, Russell, I don't know if you saw yesterday, man. I did. Quite a rocket ship, the Russell. I mean, check out that run yesterday. The Russell, you go from 1562 up to 1590. Yeah. That's, it was almost 2%. It was like 1.7% right. on the day. Um, pretty remarkable, but jumping back. So here's oil, 66.16. Let's see what we got going on in here. Um, you know what's going to happen? I had this up early. Yeah, so bummer. I'm going to have to refresh this real quick to get. So I had this up early. It doesn't have the noon. Ah, uh, thank you. Yeah, we got. Thank you. This is just, we reformatted monitor. the whole hard drive, so right. we got some monitors in here. We're on Windows 10 rocking and rolling now. You come back, everything's new, man. Um, yeah, right? Uh, Good job. Yeah. New computer firing on all cylinders, man. Um, okay, close that bad boy. Pull up here. Okay, we're back. Commodities, call spreads, we're in crude oil. Um, so let's start off with the 11 AMs. We're looking at the June contract. We're trading at 66. 17. We have the opportunity for exposure from 66.25. Pretty close, right? Yeah, Only bad. talking about eight pennies. Uh, this would be your bullish spread here. So right now you're out of the money on this one, right? Because the bullish spread starts to gain value at 66.25. You're trading at 66.17. You're going to be paying just premium. So you're paying about 12 bucks to the 11 a.m. and getting 66 uh, on your bearish side. 66. Now this one is going to have about eight pennies of intrinsic value. And there's your difference by eight pennies. So you're looking at 32. Not bad. No, it's not. Not bad at all not for the 11 a.m.s. Yeah. yeah. Um, now jump into the noons. We're going to have the identical prices. So that's always nice that you get to just basically figure out how much they're charging you for that extra huh. hour, yeah. right? So here's our bullish spread. The 11 a.m. is ticking 66.32 by 66.35. And look how close it is, man. They're only charging you basically two pennies. Now, it almost seems like, I want to make sure the EIA is coming out. These seem very cheap, man. Right. They, they really do. And this is where you want to get used to what you're doing. We had the Easter holiday. I don't think that plays into Monday. Right. I just want to be sure, because this seems very affordable right. for the numbers coming down. Right. Um, but we know that, we just put in that estimate, so we know it's coming out. <laughs> you're right. Exactly. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. So we're getting the numbers at 1030. Um, 66.25, we're about 11 cents out of the money. I mean, look at this. Even, even if you're just making a directional yeah. trade, right? So the market's saying that the move was done over the weekend when they put the, you know, sanctions on, what, May 5th. Yeah, they're yeah. just pricing very little volatility premium into this market. Um, there's your noon on the bearish side. And so you're looking at $30. Yeah, thirty-four dollars. I mean, that's only thirty-four pennies. Right. Um, and let's just see where the dailies line up. Not a bad trade if you're looking for some movement. So the dailies, sixty-six dollars. Let's see if these jump in too. So sixty-six dollars, you can gain exposure. So the elevens and the noons, we were going to have a little bit of intrinsic value to the bearish side, right? Because we start at sixty-six twenty-five. The contract's only ten pennies away. Well, guess what? If you want some bullish. Well, here's your opportunity, there and you then now you have the 66, so you got about 15 cents of intrinsic value to, to the bullish bucks. side. And let's see where. So you're looking at 45? Yeah, 45, 47 cents from 230, for, uh, up until 230, and you'd have five bucks of exposure. And just, uh, let's see if this top live is, I think it is. It usually they give it to us about 10 minutes ahead of time. There it is. And let's see if they're saying what we're looking for. So what to watch for? Let's back it up because they have three points here. U.S. refiners are taking longer than historically to come back from an end of winter maintenance season. That's been a current theme, man, yeah. pulling that up, that maintenance deal. Two weeks ago, crude oil intake ran at the lowest level since 2015 with just 16 million barrels a day refined compared to nearly 17 million barrels a day at the same time in the previous two years. It's nonetheless a question of when rather than if. So they'll get there, right? Yeah. Um, it's just when's it going to happen? Gas inventories declined for nine consecutive weeks, dropping to the lowest level for this time of the year since 2015. With demand relatively healthy, refineries taking longer than normal to return to their with winter maintenance, excuse me, to return from their winter maintenance, traders are starting to worry that the U.S. may enter a high demand driving season with low gas inventories. So they, they can't turn the oil into gas, right? So yeah. you got low gas inventories, right. refineries aren't 
keeping up with the amount of gas they need refined. And May, as a result, you see... May seeing, 30th is the beginning of the driving season. Yeah, well, really, uh, so Memorial Day, May 27th. Yeah. So that's May 24th would right. probably be that, right? Um, uh, with domestic oil production surging, crude oil gross imports have fallen in 2019 to unusually low levels. In February, they dropped to 5.9 barrel, million barrels a day, lowest level since 1996. What is that? Domestic? Domestic oil production. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so excuse me. Domestic oil production it's surging, but yeah. gross imports. Yep. So, we're making so much oil, we're it, not importing it. Exactly. Right. right. Um, two pretty, weeks ago, they also floated. Yeah. Um, let's see if they got what uh, what that expectation number was gonna be. API. All right. It, it, yeah. What was the API? I'm not sure. Do they have it down there? Like 6.8 arise. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're looking for an increase of about a million barrels we saw at the top, I believe, there. But nonetheless, we'll find out. Three minutes. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are going to be coming right back. Uh, we have the Dow Industrials right now uh, trading. Oh, uh, we're positive. Nine, and NASDAQ is up one. S&P's a flat. Come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 14, Nasdaq's flat, S&P's are down 1. And we got oil numbers out here. It seems like when we put in that whisper number, man, we should always go high as in surpluses. But guess what, man? That doesn't mean 
that uh, the prices are going to come down. We've seen it. We've had yeah, because yeah, so gas inventories fell. Yeah, so crude oil inventories, headline number, rising 5.48 million barrels. The estimate was about an increase of a million barrels. Okay. Um, gas inventories falling 2.13 million barrels. Jumping back to the charts, we'll close these bad boys down, all our order screens. Where are we trading at? We're down a bit, which is what you'd expect. 66.07 currently in the contract. Look at that volatility we're getting. So we have more supply, right? More yeah. supply. People are going to pay cheaper amounts because there's more supply in the market. You should get lower prices on a surprise like that, as we've seen consistently, though. No heavy reaction on the get-go. And uh, we've seen misses, it seems like, many times right. that they're to the upside. And still, we're dealing with six-month highs in oil. Right. So just uh, be no aware. Um, right. I think I was doing the program with Basil last week on Wednesday. And we were talking about oil. And uh, we had said the same exact thing. And I said, you know, I would be very cautious to be bearish because when you're playing the volatility number, right. if you're bearish, you're looking for this type of a reaction, right? right. A big miss, and you don't get the move. Right. So what are you really trading for if you're bearish right. on volatility if you get a surprise build right. and the market doesn't go down? Right. And that's what we had the discussion. Yes. And, and, and so far, it's been the same exact thing right now. We're five pennies below where we were trading at. Um, and we have plenty of oil. Yeah. Right? right? And let's just jump back and see what else we're saying. Uh, that's not it. This is going to be it. So still no increase in gasoline stockpiles. Nationwide inventories, as we just mentioned. Now, this makes 10 straight weeks of declines. And I'm, I'm going to guess that we'll see something about the refineries in here as well. Um, so bigger than expected build. 5.48 million barrels. But a yeah. pretty muted response so far. And as we always say, Takes a little time, right? Takes a little time, but pretty muted response for yeah, sure. Yeah. So the the the, uh, the still not distilleries, the refineries. Refineries are gonna have plenty of oil. They they just it's still the change of a. They just can't do. Right. Yeah, they just can't right. keep up basically with right. with the amount of gas. So so there's the headline number. Crude rising about 5.5 million barrels. Median estimate, median estimate was an increase about one. Gas pretty much in line. It's just that they knew it was going to happen pretty right. much that they're they're you know declining as they can't keep up and refine gasoline, refine crude into gasoline. Uh, distillates a decline to 660. Estimate was declined to 900. Pretty close. Cushing crude up 460,000 barrels. Pad three crude up 1.7 million barrels. Refinery utilization plus 2.4. Estimate was plus 0.8. So maybe maybe um, they're utilizing what they have there a little bit more than they were expecting. Uh, refinery crude imports, inputs up 505,000 barrels per day. Crude imports up 1.1 million. I wonder how that plays into what we were just talking about, right, right? with that, that crude um, that we're importing very small amounts. So as, you, as you'd expect, gas futures liking that draw pairing some of the day's early losses, and so they're getting a bit of a spike. Looks like... Uh, 210 to 2, well, 11 and a half, I guess, right? Yeah, I guess. Gasoline. What are we looking That's at? That's wholesale gasoline. I was like, yeah, what time are they looking at, though? See how this I is? Know, it says I April 24th, and we're seeing like a, a 3 p.m. time slot on this. Um, I don't know what they're... I don't know. I don't know who's posting this chart and what time zone they're in, but yeah. they're not in Eastern, Eastern time right. zone. Um, but nonetheless, uh, pretty interesting. We'll check back one time. Yeah, sitting right there, man. That's got to be so frustrating. If you were just trading this every week, man, you're saying, I don't know, this is going to be the week. There's going to be a big build, and oil's going to pull back. Yeah. And you get a big build, and you pull up the chart. And it goes up. And it goes up. And it goes up. <laughs> and it goes up. It goes up, exactly. Wow. Yeah. Let's go take a look at the uh, the GDX for some tigers and tigresses out here. So uh, the GDX uh, bottom line, last couple of weeks, we just went down from uh, 22.93. You're 287. Now, what you're doing here, and you're doing with dramatically lighter volume, you're going into the breakout area. The, the GDX wanted to fill this gap. The gap was uh, 2059. Okay. We've hit 2067. And we've drew, rejected lower price out here today, so we'll see whether it can get going. But that's, that's on the daily uh, as well as the weekly. You know? So if you're in that market, uh, it hasn't done anything yet to destroy the texture of the consolidation that's in. You know, because that's, you know, you can see that. On a weekly, what's that? 270 million. It came down last week with 161 minus a day. Yeah. Know? But that's still 90 million. You don't do yeah. 90 million in a day. Just zoom in together. You know? go. Yeah. 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 You don't do 90 million a day. So you get a close uh, 21. No, I think one more. Where are you? Sorry, which one are you? Let's see. This is different this way. No, you're, this is a weekly. I just zoomed it in. So wait, what? Did, can we go back to the daily? Yeah. Because that's what I think it was January. 
No, daily. You're still. Yeah. Yeah, six months should do it. Because it was January. Yeah, that's right here. Yeah. 24th. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. 2059. Okay. That's the break. Uh, what'd you say? January 24th again, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's put this on the weekly now. And can I just zoom it in? That's what... Yeah, but I just want to, I don't want to lose that shot. No, that, I... That's February. When I... Right? Yeah. It would help to zoom it in. Yeah, this, that's the bar we're looking at. Okay. So there it is. Same thing. Right yeah. Right there. Right. There you go. Right. So yeah. the top of that bar is uh, 2123. This is what you like this week. 2117. You'd like to be inside before the close of this week. And what I'm doing there, folks, is that that's, you know, we started higher the week of the 24th, and then we really broke topside the week of the, uh, what does that say? February 1st. February 1st. Yeah. So you want to close inside of that level. You okay. got to close inside of that level this week. That'll be a rejection of lower price at the breakout area with tremendously lighter volume. So we'll see where the baby shakes out. You know, it's you know, it's pretty amazing. This dollar since I left just hasn't stopped. I mean, you know, you you no, you know, it's, it's and that has correlated. Remember, I said many times to the gold. And yeah. gold's pulled back pretty hard the whole time too. Right. Um, no, so there wasn't yeah. quite the same relationship when, but over the last ten days, man, yeah, dollar's been higher, gold's been lower, pretty yeah. much consistently. Yeah. And oil's been higher too. <laughs> yeah. You know the, it, it, you know. There been, you go, man. Yeah. We just went from. 13, 15 almost, what, 13, what's that high? 13, yeah. 14, right? Yeah. And you got a rejection there yesterday, too. So, and you got some decent volume out here today. So, it's going to be the, what's, what's unusual about the dollar is that it was last Thursday, I was w watching this even when I was um, in China. As the dollar broke topside, folks, that was a spike higher. And when you get a spike higher and don't get big follow through, you know, that's a big heads up, because um, it only stayed up there on the open. It was, uh, you know, when we come back after the break, there was a split. I mean, there was a spike higher, couldn't handle it, came lower. Yesterday, you get over it with tremendously lighter volume. So just putting some uh, of the analysis points they have out there. So gross oil imports rose massively last week with 7.1 million barrels. So that's, I think they said 5.9 was the number. Yeah. So they're up to 7.1. Huge increase in shipments from Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Venezuela. So I guess, I'm not too familiar, but that is a huge jump when you go from 5.9 to 7.1. Um, on a weekly basis, right, in terms right. of imports, that's a huge jump percentage-wise. So nationwide, crude stocks, I think this means stockpiles, are now at the highest since October 17, taking a closer look at the massive build today. Most of it was driven by East Coast and Gulf Coast. Um, that's surprising as refinery, refinery utilization, that's, we went over that one, right, with a refinery utilization right there, was up. But they're uh, still got stockpiles, so they they were they were finding it, and they can't refine it quick enough. And checking back in, we were just right where we were, 66.20. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you are in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. 
Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up by four. Nasdaq's up three. S&P's are down one. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Kegstack, as you do each and every Wednesday at uh, 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at forex-trading-unlocked.com. That's forex-trading-unlocked.com. Teddy Kegstack, what's going on, brother? Morning, guys. It's a sunny day in Chicago. I'm looking forward to playing some golf this afternoon. That oh, is baby. a beautiful thing. I love it, man. That's great. You can overlook that uh, beautiful uh, Lake Michigan, right? Get that. And now, how about this rally in the dollar? It's a good day to go play golf because I think the market's already shot their, uh, you know, momentum for the day. Yeah, the you know, let, let's talk about that, man. I mean, I, I was just, you know, the the index itself, you know, that that took off topside last week. Sp well, it's actually the index spiked higher on the open and then couldn't hold price. And then, you know, the baby, of course, you know, jumped over that uh, level. You know, I, I guess in a longer context, it, it seems, Teddy, that we're trying to break out, right? And it hasn't actually broken out yet. You know, meaning if I bring this back, you're going to see this consolidation. This has been a long consolidation, folks. But what you're going to see here is we're still, <laughs> look at this. So the co continuous contract, 97,705. I mean, still laying up there. Yeah, that's the end of last well, year, right? I think, I think I can maybe give you a little explanation why it's really hanging and not really accelerating the move. Yes. If you look, at, if you really look at the currencies that are moving, like, I don't know, do you, if you know anybody that's short the uh, U.S. dollar Canada today, I feel bad for them. Wow. You know, <laughs> they're getting really crushed. I mean, anyone that's trading the Aussie dollar, the Canada, they're going to just Smashed today by the dollar. Look at that. Pound, pound is actually slightly higher, and the Swiss, which has been getting crushed against the dollar, they're actually stronger against the dollar today. And the euro, that's the one that's that's definitely pushing its lows, but it's not like a really big break for this for the dollar to be on its highs. So that what's happening right now is all the lesser majors and even all the lesser, more um, what we say, lower tier currencies. They're the ones that are getting just really shellacked by the dollar right now, yeah. which, which is net positive for us because we're coming into earnings season. And if this continues for the next like couple months, you're probably going to see second quarter earnings explode for, for companies. Okay. Yeah. So th that would be because you figure they can buy their goods cheaper? Well, yeah. Well, like, like take, take, for instance, Starbucks. Um, my theory right now is like you have coffee prices that globally have come back, which is that's a good thing right now. Right. Now I don't know, I don't drink coffee and I don't really go to Starbucks very often unless I meet somebody. Yeah. But I know it's, it's pretty expensive. I don't 
don't know that they have ever cut their prices for the cups of coffee. <laughs> um, but because of the currency, um, because of the strength of the dollar in the countries that they import coffee from, the cost of doing business for Starbucks is completely dropping. You yeah. know, and has several quarters. So now that's going to definitely impact earnings. So I would say that this, I don't know when Starbucks is coming out with their earnings for first quarter, but I would assume that just by that factor alone, even if, if sales were flat to only slightly higher, there's going to have a good uptick in earnings. And I think that will also continue into the next quarter as well. And that would other, mean also for other countries too, whether it's a food producer, you know, or a manufacturer, things like that, their margins will actually be if, if the economy doesn't grow and just stays at a at an even level, the profits should be going should still accelerate over the next quarter or two because of that. Yeah, I know you can see that, and you know, uh, folks, as uh, Teddy was just talking there, we brought up uh, so Starbucks. Teddy comes out tomorrow. Tomorrow after the bell. After, after the nice close. Yeah. And yeah, you can see if we if we bring. Is there a trend on that chart? I oh can't my, see. I get the coffee <laughs> chart up right now, Teddy. As you. You're just talking, and uh, just six months ago, coffee was a buck thirty-one a pound. Folks, you had ninety-three cents exactly. And you're right. There's no, no way that they've talked about reducing their prices. I go to Starbucks sometimes. Mm. I didn't see those prices dropping. That's because they ain't dropping, man. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then the currency is also stronger. So between those two pricings, their their margins have to be exploding to the positive side. Right. Yeah. Right. And so. the, I, I guess uh, in Canada, you know that. That's quite a move. I mean, yeah. 134 to one U.S. dollar. You know, it, yeah, almost 135 right now. Yeah, yeah. but they blasted through those highs right now. Yeah. This right. is that explosive move. So you have Canada. Like, I mean, I, I know we import things from Canada. It's, it's obviously a positive for us. You yeah. know, um, yeah. Australia. They're getting hammered. And remember, we were talking about the New Zealand dollar a few weeks ago about how it was trending lower. We kind of had a sellish, you know, yes. mode. It's just getting shellacked too. You know, and I, I mean, these are, they're major currencies still, they're the lesser batch of them, but for them to be hitting these extremes like this is a major, that's a big deal. This is not like they're heading into a bounce point. It looks like they're, it's a trend that they're pushing to maybe hit some extremes they ha we haven't seen in a, quite a while. It might be an interesting trend what we'll be talking about in three, four months from now. I like it. Interest hitting extremes. Oh, right. Yeah. It is. Yeah. No doubt. Huge no moves. Doubt. Yeah. Listen, folks, every trading day, you can uh, go over to uh, our man Teddy Cakestat at forex-trading-unlock.com. Well, listen, man, you have a great day. Have a, a good afternoon. Uh, oh, we hit him what? Oh, hey, what? Ivan. What do we got? Tiger Woods winning the Masters. I know. You've been away yeah. a while, man. I, <laughs> you missed a lot. That was so cool. I watched him. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I watched him. That's, That's pretty crazy. That man. was the one thing. Oh. I, I woke up in the middle of the night. I texted you. Yeah, watched yeah. it. Watch him on the 18th hole and then fall asleep again. Because you're in China 12 hours forward. Right. So the, it finished was, at like 2 or 3 in the afternoon. So I, that's good. Was, you woke up at 2 in the morning, was, caught the final putt, celebrating was, your mind, and went to sleep. It was the day I got there, I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. That was quite, cool. that was pretty cool. Huh, Seriously. Teddy? Yeah. Quite a trip, huh? So oh, it was great. So hit him like Tiger today, Teddy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, okay, man. Listen, you have a great one, a safe one. Okay. Take care, guys. Thanks, Thanks Teddy. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, remarkable. That man. was so yeah. cool. Oh, just uh, if you're a golf fan, if you're a sports fan, if you're a fan of life, man, it's pretty yeah. cool to see uh, no, totally. the, the whole the resilience. Yeah. yeah, I mean, right. it was, you know, it's it uh, and to put things in context, man, that that spinal surgery. So he had fusion surgery. You take yeah. two vertebrae, fuse them together. That obviously decreases your torque on your body. Yeah. No other professional golfer had ever, I believe, won a tournament. After, after having that surgery, and never mind just walking around. Well, that's, good. you just want to feel good. Like right. that's and that's right. what Tiger said. You know, right. this is about life. This isn't about playing sports. I just right. want to feel good because he's right. been in so much pain. And um, so, I mean, the guys, the guys, a phenom. And yeah. uh, Nike, Nike shares higher on that day, of course. Were they? Oh, yeah, he was wearing sense. his swoosh, man. He oh, had a red shirt, and and, uh, and he was Nike's one of the the few that stuck with him throughout right. that 11, 12, 13 years. Right. But it is remarkable when you think about. It. He hadn't won a major, I think, in 11 years. Um, yeah. And uh, a lot has changed as in uh, oh, Nike yeah. doesn't even sell golf drivers, right? They don't sell That's products. Right. They had to get out of that entire business right. because of it, but they stuck with them, right. um, apparel and so right. forth. And, and, and hey, we'll see, man. He's going to come back. He looked, he looked in top shape. So oh, it was great. Yeah. It's great for the game. Too. Oh, and, and for life, as you said, I think it was just great. Yeah, for no, it's yeah. for everything he's dealt with, man. Eleven years to come right. back. Uh, 
What is interesting, though, when you think about it, is that he, 11 years later, he's still almost the whole sport. Like, what have, where, what's going on with golf? And there's, like, amazing other golfers. There right? is, Rory and they're McElroy, great. I you know. know, like, I, all these guys. He's just but different. they're not Tiger, man. Right. Tiger came in. He won that first Masters, 97, when he won it by, he was 21 years old, won it by 12 strokes. That's, he's in a different world, so yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so let's go look at those oil numbers yeah, again. Yeah, as I, as I let out a little bit of an expression, we pull yeah. up the chart. The first move is not always the move. And guess what, man? If you were bearish today, you're getting paid. Um, so we were trading at 66.15, 66.10. Right. We did get the surprise build. You should see lower prices. And it took a few minutes. So the, the slide begins at 10.35, maybe five minutes it took. Uh, we were up at 66.38, and we're now a solid 50 cents below that level, right? No, 60 cents below that level. Trained at 66.76, uh, excuse, 65.76. So price is dropping a bit. We're at 66.40, now approaching almost 70 cents from that level. Yeah, so we'll see. But a little bit of negative action, as you should expect on that type of move. And uh, we go take a look at the market itself. So CL, let's so look at the CLM we're on. Oh, one more. Thank you. Nope. Yeah. CL. Yeah. 
Okay, so... So it's going to be a little bit delayed, right? Yeah. Just where it's 65.92, where the contract's about 20 to 30 cents below where it's priced here. Yeah, we're still over these highs from... That was the day that... With, I guess May May 5th, the... Uh, April? What? Uh, no, May 5th, the sanctions go on, I believe, or May Oh, okay, 1st. okay, okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, May 2nd, I believe. May 2nd, yeah. right, all right. So... For the waivers, this is just... Right, right. So you're talking about? Yeah. 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 But that was the big reaction when the news came out, which I believe was Monday this week, just two days ago. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And market-wise, uh, bottom line is that uh, you get the NASDAQ uh, at, at highs, no doubt, you know, so... Um, hey, S&P's pretty close oh, as well, man. Yeah, big time. The market. Stay right there, folks. We get uh, TD Ameritrade uh, Think of Swim coming up next. I'm man Basil Chapman, uh, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, great man. to be back with you. Great to have you back. Thanks for the great job, hey, too. Hey, definitely. You got it, man. Go get them, folks.